Good evening and welcome to the Rewind Show. Hashtag 155. Friday evening. The season is over, apart from the Cup, of course, and we've got a lot to get through this evening. I'm Steve Brown, and over there in Bakeup is the manager of Bakeup Borough. That is Brent Peters, sorting himself out, sorting all his papers out. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, okay. Weather's a little bit better. Are you enjoying your break? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, a little break until we uh, we get cracking with the, the final. There's a lot to do, a lot to squeeze in. The season's not, not over, is it? And it's never over oh, for you. There's, there's no break here. I mean, I mean uh, next week, the under-23s play Monday on Bake Up and under-23s play on Bake Up on Thursday. And in between that, we've got a training session on Bake Up. So, uh, you know, the, so there's no rest. I was, you know, the season, the league fixtures might have finished. Yeah. But in terms of um, still carrying on and still there's still games going on, like I said, the under-23s on Sunday, um, two of our youth teams are on here as well. So rest assured. And then so tomorrow I've got to get this pitch uh, sorted out, ready for these uh for these games and the training session, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's still uh, it's still very much uh, alive and kicking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, there's a lot going on. I just want to give it a mention before I forget. Uh, but we've got a couple of uh, like partnerships to set up for the finals. There's a lot going on behind the scenes, as you say, Brent. And one of those is the introduction of the Edward Case Cup final partners, which uh, this year is. James Noon at uh, AV Solutions, which is great news. Yeah, it's uh, he's a good supporter. Is is James? I mean, uh, you know, I try to give something back to him when I can. You know, our vehicles all have to have dash cams in, and um, you know, they go down to James to sort that out. You know, so it's it's good that we're uh, replenishing when we can what he puts into to the football club to help us. Definitely. You know, without 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 you know just going away from that without the you know, without the uh, the support of the business fraternity, any football club, you, look, you see it, you see it all, all, all over all the time. You know, if you are operating a football club in the national league uh, system, <laughs> believe me, there is a lot, a lot of money involved, a lot of money. It, you know, it's not, it's not easy, and um, you know, you've got to have the business fraternity kind of partnership in you and, and buying into it, and we're indebted to. You know, to these people uh, as well. You know, Andrew Knights does a fantastic job in uh, in in kind of uh, being the contact between the football club and um, and the businesses. And there's varying packages to 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 offer to them to uh, you know to suit their the kind of the purse strings, if you will. Um, but but without the, I've said it before and I've said it all along. You know, any football club that's operating at this level, your commercial arm has got to be right. If your commercial arm isn't right, you've got a serious, you'll have a serious problem. No club, I don't care what level it is, no club should be even thinking of relying on the gate money because you can't rely on gates. No. You know, our gates have been fantastic all season. Fantastic. You know, no two ways about it. But because we've had a double header, you know, kind of Monday and, uh, Monday and Wednesday, you know the two gates Monday and Wednesday were were, were kind of poor, but you, um, you know you you've got to you've you know you've got to accept that because you know technically we're we're not a, we're not in a playoff position, so it weren't in, they weren't an important game. Not, neither were important games for us in terms of where we're where we're going to finish in the league. What were important for us was was uh, we need we needed to be going into the, the cup final we we kind of a bit of form you know it were important i picked two teams i picked two teams i picked one for the monday game against Allerton LR and Allerton LR you, you know were desperate to have that game on earlier in the week than later for obvious reasons um and it was a strong side you know Ryan our Ryan Russell's very close to their manager uh uh, Dave Jones and um, you know so he knew we, 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 they were going to put a strong side out and basically I put a stronger side out that I felt uh, I could do um, on the day, on the night for that game and pleasing on that on that game you know I felt we were back to the the bake up that we were used to seeing last season and, and we've seen, we seen spasmodic this season, 
you know, where we played with an high tempo, uh, full of energy, but, but the link-up play and the, and the football and possession were fantastic. Now, now, you're hoping that when you pick your second team, I don't mean second team in as in the second team, but when you pick the next team to play and, and go out on the, on the Wednesday, you hope that, that they set the bar of, of the team that played against LR and you're hoping, especially with the cup final on the horizon, that that team on Wednesday will go out and, and at least match them. Yeah. Um, that's what you're hoping. That's what you're hoping for. But unfortunately... That uh, didn't that, realize. That didn't happen. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and, and that is the disappointment because, you know, if that happens... You know, from where I'm sat and where my coaches are, um, you know, you start you start to think, well, you know, there's some serious competition well, let, here. Let's, let's talk about that, Brent, because you know we've got the three games that we're going to cover. We've got Runcorn Town, Afton LR, and Shelley. And your your thought process going into those games is to give players, give all your squad, the best chance of possible of getting into that final squad. So. How do you go about mixing and matching and filling holes and, and making sure that everyone gets equal opportunity to shine? Well, I'll give you a prime example on one, on one situation here, a prime example. Because of, you, you know, let, let, let's look at it this way. In one of the games this, over the weekend, over the last, few, uh, the last few days, you know, we brought Ryan... We brought Ryan Sidall back in, you know, brought him back from uh, Rosendale uh, FC. Um, he's been doing well there. He's captain now under 23s. And I felt with the, you know, everybody deserves a chance and everybody deserves, you, you know, it's like we brought Ellis because uh, yeah. they've got to have so many games to be able to be qualify to be selected. If anything goes wrong and you need them, you, you know, <laughs> you need to make sure that they're eligible to play. Yeah. So we'll take this scenario. Now, when, when in the game that, 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 that Ryan came in and played was away to Ashton Athletic, I think it were. Yeah, the, the week before, yeah. Yeah, so we played him. And I think Callum, Callum Hewitt had a suspension, if my memory serves me rightly. I've got all the team sheets here, but you know, I'll just try and think off memory. I think Callum Hewitt had a, had a suspension. So... So basically, it was an ideal opportunity to bring into the squad Ryan Siddall, who actually got a starting lineup. So he played. Yeah. And he played very, very well in that game, as you know. He did. He played excellent. Now, the next game, I think it was, yeah, the next game. So when it comes down to the next game where Callum's available, it's not in an ideal world what you would do if we, if we weren't in this situation. You keep, you, you wouldn't change, you wouldn't change kind of a, uh, you, you wouldn't change uh, a winning or or a, or a side that's doing doing well, you know, or done well in the game. And let's be honest, you know, that's the game what we had our goalkeeper sent off, and we had to play kind well, we played, of. We played fifty minutes with ten men, and we totally right in the goal. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so the situation we're there, you know, it, it's one of them. If you if you were going, you'd, you'd stay faith, you'd stay loyal to that team in going into your next game. But because we're running out of football matches, I couldn't stay loyal to that team yeah. as, a, as a collective. And the reason why I couldn't stay loyal to that team as a collective was because some players needed some more game time. So to get, so to get Callum in with some game time and he's coming back from suspension, right, it meant that I either take Ryan back out of the squad or, or sit him on the bench, but he's only played one game, yeah. or I move Ryan because he can play, he's a utility player, so he can play basically anywhere. So what I opted to do, so it made a space for Callum, I moved him to left back. Yeah, and you kept him in the side. And I kept him in the side. But I did that, so it, it served two purposes. It got, me, it got the door open for Callum to come in, who really, in, 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 under the circumstances of how the team played on the against Ashton Athletic, probably Callum Wonder got back in, in reality, yeah. right? Because you'd have stuck with them, with, with that group. 
But because it's coming up to the end of the season and, and, I, and I'm, I have to be seen to be trying to be fair to everybody and then nobody can come and say, well, I didn't have a fair crack of the whip. That's what I did. You know, now it's not ideal, but at the end of the day, if we were challenging for a playoff place or a promotion, yeah. that wouldn't come into it. No. But because we're not and, we, and, we're, and we're, we're just playing the season out, it didn't matter. The most important thing were not about results or, or really collective team performance. It, it's not really about that now. And it hasn't been for a few, for a few weeks. It's not been about mm. a collective team performance. And it's not been about, it's been about individuals as an individual coming in the team and be able to lay the marker down with a, to, 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 to say to me and to say to my coaches, I deserve to be in that cup final squad. Yeah, and the only and way that, you're going to be, and the only way you're going to be able to achieve that is by swapping and changing your sides in the uh, the last four matches, as, as it was. Yeah, that's right, and 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 that's what I've done. I mean, like I said, again, again, we have to look at it this way, which is so frustrating from where I'm coming from because sooner rather than later. We have discussions, so me and my staff will have discussions about what we think is going to be where we're at with, with, this, with the squad that's going to go into that cup final. And in an ideal world, you'd like to, not without telling anybody anything, you'd like to play uh, that squad. You'd like to yeah. play them because there's more game time to get, more, more game time to get as a collective together then, then they've got a good chance of uh, of, of the success, you yeah. know. And obviously, it's co continuity. The issue that we've had is is the fact that that couldn't happen. You've got a situation where straight away, you know, who's been who's been a, a, a solid as a rock for us all season, Joy Fallon, he's on a three match ban, yeah. right? It's, it is what it is. He's on a three match ban, so he's not in. So you can't play him. So he's not he, he's not in. You've got another situation where Gareth Wade just got, got an injury, and and because he's got an injury, he's decided to take because it, it clashed with his it clashed with his family, um, something he was doing around the cup final date. He changed that while he was injured to go away uh, as a you know as an alternative. So he brought so he brought, so he brought it forward. So, so he brought it forward. So we know Gareth Wade, yeah. So Gareth Wager hasn't been being involved. So straight away, yeah. you, 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 your main pairing, or I should have said the pairing that's been ma majority of the percentages of the games all season, right, are not there. Yeah. They're not there. And then, and then there was a gap with Mason Fallon missing a game. Correct. Mason, so then Mason Fallon misses a game. So then you haven't, got, you haven't got Mason available. And then all of a sudden the player drops on you and says, Oh, by the way, when he's leaving the Ashton Athletic Ground, by the way, I'm not here for the next few games next week. And I've gone, you're joking. And he's gone, no, I'm away. Yeah. Yeah. I'm away. So yeah, That throws a spanner in the works. So, that, so another spanner in the works. And then when it came to the end, the week after, because obviously the season has, because of postponements, the season went on. So the week after, I get, Another player that's never said anything, who obviously, you know, if he's fit and he's sharp and looking good, he'd be one of the first names on the team sheet. But unfortunately, he's not looking sharp and he's not looking fit. But he says to me, uh, oh, by the way, this is my last game. I'm not available next week. And you think, you think you're trying to get some continuity and you're yeah. trying to get game time for these lads to be, to be able to pu push themselves up to speed. And then this is dropped on you. Now, that's frustrating. And it's more frustrating because, listen, if you, if you, if you want to play, whether it's for Bay Cup, Borough, Ramsbottom, United, whoever, Baron Oldswick, whoever, if you want to play at this level of football, then you've got to be committed. I'm sorry, it's not like, in the it's not like in the West Lanks no. League, and uh, 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 or anything like that. You've got to be totally committed, because that's what it demands, and it, you know the league demands that, and even the next league does, and the next league, you know, it demands all this. And if you're a player that 
if you're not going to be a bit, and you know that the season, you know the end date of the season, and you know it's, you know, this time of the year is the business end of the season. You know, this is where it's, it, it, it tells you it's important. So in my mind, and I've, it's not just now I'm saying it, I've said it all along, I bang the drum all the time. You know, you've got to be committed and you can't just drop it and say, well, I'm, I'm aware or, or whatever. Now, I get, I get that, that, that people, I mean, both of them, I mean, genuinely, were probably not holidays as such. They were to do with the work. Yeah. And I get that sometimes, that work can, it can have a, have a bearing on it. But if it's got a bearing on it, Surely to goodness, there's got to be notice. I mean, it's, I don't think I've been just dealing with players, managing players, just for in the last blinking 12 months or two years. This is, this, I've had players in generations before, but they've always managed to get, even firemen, they've always managed to sort the shifts out and get off. So it's how much a player wants to do it. Yeah. If you want to do it, you'll do it. If you don't want to do it, you won't do it. But that comes down to the individual and character of the individual. I can't do nothing about that. All I can do is try to, to do my best and the coaches can do their best with what we've got available. But sometimes you haven't got available as a collective to work with because of situations and scenarios. And, and, that's, what, and that's when it comes very, very difficult. But in terms of going back to the cup final and preparations in terms of the games, looking back, I think I've been absolutely more than fair with everybody, everybody, because they've all been given a good chance, even to the fact that young Ellis, yeah. who's, who's, who's registered, you know, and he hasn't had a sniff all season, basically, you know, it was so important that because, because you're not playing for another three weeks, there's a lot of things can happen in three weeks. Yeah. So it could happen where we have to call on him. And if we have to call on him, he's got to be ready. But if he's, if he's, he, he might be ready fitness wise, but he might not be ready game wise because he hasn't got enough games in but to that, be able to, to be able to play in it. For you as a manager, though, Brent, that's kind of, you know, you're always preempting, you're always putting a plan B, a C or D in place. Because as you said, Ellis may not, be a part of that final team, but in order for him to, for you to, you know, activate it if needed, he needed to get them games in. Yeah. Now, now, as a manager, that is my job because I've got to look at all these scenarios and make sure in every any eventuality we're covered. Yeah. I mean, it's like the, it's like let, let, let's take it a bit bit further than this. It's like if I weren't on top of my job doing that. It's like the Kyle Sidall situation, right? And I just carried on playing because you think, well, we'll pick our best side, what we think our best side is at the moment. We'll pick it and we'll go out and play. And then all of a sudden, you know, bookings are flying and people getting booked and everything. And then ding dong, it drops through and he says, Kyle Sidall's on a three-match ban, blah, 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 uh, accumulation of bookings. And then you look how many games you've got left and you think, blind man, one of them's cup final. Yeah. Blimey, one of them is first game next season. And you've taken right? the eye off the ball and, you, and he misses. He misses. Now, I've got a duty. The players aren't looking at that. They're not looking. They don't, they don't even know. They probably don't give the monkeys. Yeah. But they give the monkeys if they didn't play it final and you drop it on them and say, you can't play. What do you mean I can't play? We well, suspended. Right? So I've got to be kind of proactive. And so what I'm looking at, and then what I did with Kyle, because I knew he were on 10 bookings, and what happens, for those who don't know and those who are listening in, it starts off with five bookings accumulation by a certain date. When that date kicks in, it changes to 10, right? right? It changes to 10. And the 10 will stay with you, accumulation of 10 will stay with you until April, till the second Sunday in April, Sunday. Yeah. In April. Kyle Sidall, a few weeks ago, was sat on uh, 10 bookings. So theoretically, with 10 bookings, he's suspended. The reason why he wasn't suspended, because one of the games was game-specific, FA Vaz. Yeah. 
So it's game specific. So those who don't understand what I mean by that is the FA Vaz is a competition where it's controlled by, it doesn't come onto your accumulation as such. It's controlled by, if you get booked by the FA, if you get booked in the Vaz, right, and you get two bookings in the Vaz, you're suspended and you go through, you're suspended for the third game in the Vaz. Yeah. That's how, so it becomes game specific, but it doesn't count in your accumulation. So in theory, Kyle had 10, he would do a suspension. But because he had a game-specific ban, uh, uh, suspend, uh, booking, in reality, even though it's showing 10, he only had nine. Yeah. See, a lot of, so, managers, a lot of managers would have overlooked that, Brent, because well, the fact that you do the secretarial work with the uh, league and, and managing as well, you're able to cover it. But some managers would have just played him. I want to know. Correct. 100%, right? So straight away, I've double-checked with the Lancashire Football Association before, and Justine has said to me, uh, no, he's, he's, on, he's on nine. He's on 10 showing, but he's on nine. So his next booking, he will get a three-match ban, yeah. which meant, right, three-match ban, I counted the games left, he'd run out of games, yeah. right? He'd run out of games. So, you pull so him out. I pulled him out. He's come out. Right, so for for several games we weren't in, but because games got postponed and they've extended the season, yeah, uh, for an extra week, which were last week, and because the second Sunday in April, yeah, it kicks into fifteen bookings immediately. I were, it were a godsend that because at least it got me back. He's got breathing space. It, I got breathing space, so at least it got me to play him on the Monday, on Monday, against yeah. Alex and LA. But then, of course, you're walking on eggshells because you don't want any players to get injured or get sent off. Well, no, that, and that's another reason why we've, we've, we've because of the, we, we, where we are, you know, Mason, uh, Mason Walker, our, who's been our keeper all season, you know, He's in a situation that if anything happened to him now, and this is no disrespect to Lewis North, who's who's done a you know done a, a good job to say he's, he's had to come in and he hasn't been around all season. I mean, let's be honest. Let let's be honest about Newt Lewis North. He, you know, he's an inexperienced keeper, and he actually played at Atherton Collieries when we yeah. beat Atherton Collieries to progress to the quarter final of the Lancashire Challenge Trophy against Southport. He did. So you know. He's, that that were one game, uh, and, and I think his game's been limited. He hasn't played many more, if any. So the fact of the matter is, Mason Walker, as much as I could have played him in the last few games, but if he gets an injury, then we're up, we're up the swan and we're out of paddle because we've gone past the deadline of, of assigning anybody. Yeah. So So the situation is, at that point, we're taking him out. So we haven't been playing. We haven't really been playing with a, a full strength team. We've been we've been mix and match. But the most important thing has been, as much as we're all winners and you want to win a game of football, the fact of the matter is, it's not because we can't go down and we can't get promoted. We're just sat in that, that pocket, right? The most important thing is 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 to give the individual every chance to stake a claim. Right, and and even if it's meant that we've had to, you know, because the under twenty threes haven't been playing in some respects, like Gareth Wager last Friday, I think it were or Friday before, he went and had a run with the under twenty threes, right? Now, but because the under twenty threes haven't been playing, a lot of the others couldn't do that. They haven't been able to do that. So the only way that they're going to get their minutes is by bringing them, me bringing them into our first team environment, and then just trying to whether they start the game or whether they come off the bench. But I've had to try and manage it the best I can. But that's been the most important part for me, you know, what, what, what I've had to do. But the letdown for me has come when you get it dropped on you, it's, you know, at the 11th hour when you're planning something and you're trying to work on something and then somebody drops a bombshell, oh, by the way, I'm not available these next two games, so, so my season finishes on Saturday. You think... It blows your brains. Yeah. Even when you probably know that 
that's been planned way down the road and he's not notified you. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, but this is, listen, listen, this is about everybody. This is the mentality and, and this is why I say sometimes, let's not beat about the bush here, right? Take away, you know, the last few seasons. Don't forget, this, is a, this will be our third cup final in two seasons. Yeah. And the lads have done really, really well in, in, in achieving, you, you know, getting there. I mean, it's one thing getting there. It's another thing you, you've got to go and win it. So out of the two last season, we won one and went to penalties on the other and lost on penalties. But let's get one thing straight. Previous to that, previous to that, irrespective of this group that's here now, we've been to loads of cup finals before. You know, we've been to the Lancashire Challenge, you know, the Lancashire FA uh, Challenge Cup final at the Reebok. You know, that night at the Reebok, we played against two players and the manager and his coaching staff who are now who've just taken Stockport County into the Football League. Dave yeah. Challenger, who was the manager of the AC Fylde, yeah. and, and, and the goalkeeper, Inchcliffe, with the goalkeeper against us and actually kept AC Fylde. And I'm not just saying that. The game were ending on a knife edge and at 1 0, and he pulls an absolute fantastic world he saved off for, from Daniel Cox. Mm. You know, we've, we've, we've been to the, you know, but, the, but in that team, we're more kind of more older, kind of yeah. mature. More experienced. Players, players playing in it. You know, we went in, 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 in uh, what were it, 2012, 13, we went to the same side uh, stadium where we absolutely went can batter main, main, main yeah. road in, uh, uh, and won the Macron Cup. Again, in that, in that squad and in that team, we, we, we're kind of more experienced players like your Adrian Bellamy's of the world and, and Davy Lucas of the world and, yeah. you know, people like that. So it's not, you know, it's not just about this group. We've been there before, but we've been there. We, we're kind of older, mature uh, uh, players. And, and what I'm trying to say is in football, if you want to play at this level and progress, you've got to be committed. You've got to be focused and committed. And that means committed isn't just like, there's a lot of things we're committed. Uh, and like, for instance, punctuality, you know, being on time because, you, you know, we're, we're all geared. I mean, in amateur football, it, I mean, some clubs are really well run and re really, really, really professional with this. But some clubs aren't. They're like reg ass rovers. They'll just turn up when they want to turn up, throw the bags in, go outside, smoke a fag. You know, and then and then decide to get ready. Won't stretch, probably kicking a ball before they've even stretched off. And any physio that's worth the salt anywhere, uh, uh, a rehab, rehab person will tell you you don't start kicking, putting your foot through a ball until you're stretched off properly. You know, there's all things like that. I mean, we've had an instance this season where you know time punctuality. We had one player that arrived at the wrong stadium. You know, uh, he's, he's, he's pulled up at Blinking Squires Gate and was supposed to be in Blinking AC Blackpool. How can you prepare right when that happens? That's somebody that's not even reading his thinking, reading the script. Oh, fire. Yeah, no. You get me? <laughs> and it, it's just mind blowing. It's, it, you know, it's ridiculous, really. It's absolutely ridiculous. But these are little things, yeah, but they make big. You know, and then you'll get some players that they'll finish playing on a Saturday and then they'll go and play on a Sunday. You know, and you're thinking, where's that coming from? Why are you not, why are you not recovering? We've got the best, I think we, this football club has got the best behind the scene in the game, right? In, 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 when I say in the game, in, 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 in probably the Northwest County, you know, when you, you know, they can tap into the likes of Jimmy Petruzzi, who's freelance working with football league clubs, right? And, and he's a different kind of a coach. He's like more of a, a psychologist, a mental coach, but, you know, he's all about linking, preparing and, 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 and preparing right and recoveries, you know, all things like that. Nigel, who's now doing the coaching, his sessions have been fantastic th th this season. His coaching sessions, Nigel Langley. Then we brought Alan on board, and his day job, Alan, he's actually a sports lecturer on, on sports, you know, at a, at a top college down in Manchester. So, you know, and Ryan Russell, who's actually learning, but in, his fit in the fitness role that he does, in the fitness side of things, he's, 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 he's fantastic. He's doing well, really well. So they've got these two, everything is in place. But the trouble is the players, it's just like sometimes it's like you're not dealing. And, and I don't, I, I, what I'm trying to say is if you get a player here 
that's just been released from Manchester United or Burnley or Blackburn or whatever, because they've been in that environment, yeah, mentally tuned in already. You don't have to. We a few seasons ago took two players on loan from Salford, right? And those two players that we took on loan, you, 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 they're a breath of fresh air because they were professional in what well, they the did. Two, the two young lads who came last season. Yeah. They, they, they're fantastic. You know, their attitudes and everything because they've been, they've been brought up in, a, in, a, in a, a football league environment where discipline, both on and off the pitch, is a, is a must. Yeah. I suppose, you've had, that, I suppose you've had that kind of uh, impact with... Ben Thompson, who's come through, you know, after f- leaving Fleetwood Town, he comes up from Wrexham every game. I bet you've had the same kind of energy <coughs> surrounding him. 100%. Attitude's been first class. I mean, it's like anything in football. Players have a dip in form. And when he had a dip in form, we took him out. But it, yeah. you can have a dip in form for many reasons. You can have a dip in form because it's not personal. You can have a dip in form because you're... You know, you've played a lot of games and you you might be carrying an eagle or whatever and you think, you know, you're not just playing where you should play. So so sometimes as a manager, you know, you've got to be cruel to the kind. You take them out because players will just play whether they're, whether they're fully fit or not. They want to play. And especially when you're at a club where it's always been said, it's your shirt to lose. Don't give your shirt up. So straight away they're thinking, I'm holding on to this shirt for a green yeah. death. So I'll, I'll play if I'm only at Lincoln. 70%, but the trouble is they get found out when they're only at 70% because you can see it. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not doing what they should be doing within the roles and responsibilities. So, so consequently, and Ben Thompson, yeah, he's had, he, he, had a, he, he started off absolutely fantastic, then he's gone through a dip, but since we brought him back in, he's flying again. Yeah. You know, he's, he, he's, he's on form now at the minute. You know, well, so yeah. He's had a great game away at Aston Athletic and then he followed that up with a a good performance uh, against uh, Aston Villa. Correct. Yeah, that's right. So sometimes they're not always, you know, they don't like to be left out. They don't like, but again, his attitude has been exemplary. You know, exemplary in training. You know, and even to the point where I said, I said to Ryan Russell, "Don't be bringing up up, up for a twenty-three game." But to be fair to him, he's wanted to do. Yeah. He's wanted to come up. That's the difference. You know, you'll get some players who'll go, oh, God, I'm not going. I mean, when I was Lincoln coaching down at Lincoln Bury, you used to get them, I'm not going with stiffs. That's how they used to call them. <laughs> come on, I'm not yeah, going with kind stiffs. Of, kind, of look, kind of looking down the nose a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. he's totally different. And he's gone, no, Brent, I, I, I'm happy to come. I'll, I want to play. Well, that's that for me. The, 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 it speaks volumes. It's got a big... It's got to be solid right through the camp, hasn't it? Hundred percent, yeah, definitely. You can't, you can't have, you can't have undercurrents, and you can't have bad apples. And if I find there's an undercurrent or a bad apple, he's fucking, he'll be history. No matter how good he is. Well, you've done it in the past. I've seen it. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, as regards yeah. them games, you know, Runco and Afton, Shelley, uh, were you happy with what you saw? Did you have you seen enough to? Your squad in your head at, at this moment in time, or is there a chance for some players still to make a, a claim? Look, 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 the frustration for all of us weeks ago when Toby started to come back on, onto the scene, and we're talking about when he come back from his injury. And, and uh, let's be fair here, right? We've got a top, top striker in Lewis Byrne who's picked the baton up and ran with it this season, right? Proves that with the goals he scored. Now then, he's a number nine, he wants to play a number nine, right? When you try and play him somewhere else, he's not the same, he doesn't have the same effect. Um, so, but also, in addition to that, Lewis has really got his chance because Toby's been out injured. But in reality, from a manager's point of view, if you get Toby back up to speed, and the only people that can get Toby up to speed is our fitness coach, Ryan, who will get, can get him up to speed. But to get him up to speed, he's also got to want to get up to speed. Yeah. 
You can only get up to speed. Ryan will work with him, but he can only get up to speed if he's got the desire and hunger to get up to speed. Yeah. Now, the point I'm making here is this. As a player, right, if you've got that hunger and desire and he worked with, with, with Ryan Russell and he tries to work out to get you up to speed, and let's say now that, 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 that Toby's up to speed and he's, he, he's ready and he's, he's there, let's be honest, every manager in the league would put Toby Wright in and would put Lewis Burning if you can get him in. Right, so somehow you've got to try and get them in the same team because to me, it, in some respects, having one on the bench and having one on the pitch, right? It, 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 it for me, it's more of a goal threat if they're both on the pitch. Yeah. So where's the firepower sitting on the bench behind you? Correct. This is only if they're right and ready to go. Yeah. So I've absolutely bent up. players won't know this players won't have a clue because I don't speak to the players about it it's nothing to do it's not amateur football I've spoke to my coaches about it my coaches are fully aware and Toby doesn't even know anything about it right but what I we've, I basically said behind closed doors listen we need to try and work a way that we get them both in but they've got to be up to speed right and it, it's kind of proved a little bit difficult one of the reasons why it's proved difficult because when you get both of them, not one of them, saying they've never played in a two before, well, that is a, is a, is a difficult... I, I, I was gobsmacked when I found that out, to be fair, because most players, when they're coming up through the football... It's 4-4-2. Four, four, uh, it's 4-4-2, four, four, and you play as a two, and, they, and, they, and your coach is a two. But these have both said... No. So, so my coach is then have to try and work with them both on, 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 on how they're going to, you know, play them with the two, right? Now then, they can only work with them both and try and coach them into that scenario if they're available. Yeah. Again, it comes back to their availability. If they're not available, they can't work with them. So then it comes back to also, when we went to Runcorn on... On Saturday, I'd gone through everything and I'm thinking in the end, the way that each player plays to get the best. I kind of said to the coaches when we're having a meeting and a coaches meeting, why do we not think about just tweaking, even though we've worked so well and done this formation, what we're playing, it's been trusted to us and everything else. We could tweak it slightly. It doesn't affect the defence. It doesn't affect the midfield as such, but it affects the forwards. Yeah. We could go and revert. We could go and play, right? We could go and play a 4-3-1-2. And the one could be the player that drops in, gets hold of the ball, brings people into play. And the two kind of go beyond. Yeah. Coaches buy into it. Sounds good. It'll be ideal, that. Sounds good. Sounds good. Let, 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 let's go for it. Let's go for it. Yeah? Now, we haven't had a chance to work with them because, again, players haven't been available for one reason or another. And obviously, the bad weather, the, you know, training's been getting kiboshed at times. So, we arrive at Lincoln. So, then, when I'm talking, I, didn't, I, I spoke to one player about it, about it. And the player I spoke to, because I wanted him to buy into it, was, was, was Lewis. And when I spoke to Lewis, Lewis started to buy into it a little bit. But he asked some questions. So he said to me, and it was quite right what he said. He said to me, right, okay, so let's, let's talk about this now. So Toby's playing in the one. He gets the ball. He's facing. He plays, which, he, which is Toby's game. He laid off to uh, a midfield player runner coming in, a wing back, winger, wing back, whatever, midfield player, who then puts it in behind. So he puts the ball in behind, and, and, and I'm running down onto the centre half. And the centre half gets there before me, and the full back quickly peels, and centre half plays the ball.
to the fullback. I ain't being able to do that fullback because I've just done that centre half and I went hundred percent. You can't hundred yeah. percent. So what we'll do? What we'll do? The left side of midfield player will cut him off. The fullback. He will cut him off. So he'll leave his man. Yeah. That he's he's marking, and the man in the hole will drop onto his man, and hopefully he'll win possession back, and you are breaking again. Yeah. Well, at least that's what we'll do. That's the transition. That's it. That's a simple. So there's only is. from what you've just told me there. There's two movements need to take place. Midfielder, yeah. en midfielder engages yeah. the man, yeah, and that spare man. Which will be Toby, maybe. Yeah. He sits in. He drops onto that man that he, that's been left. That's simple. 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 Nothing else changes. Nothing else changes. Right? Simple as. So, where's the problem? So, Lewis buys into it. I said, right, we'll go with it on Saturday at Runcorn. So, we arrive at the ground on Saturday. My coaches are having a, Nigel, who's the lead coach. He's talking to Alan and Ryan Russell. He's got his board out and he's going, this is what we'll do. This is exactly what we're doing. This is what we're doing. So I have my say before, before we start. Didn't even mention tactics because even though, because that's my coach's job to mention the tactics. I'll mention it to the coaches. They've got to implement yeah. it. Yeah. So the board goes up. The board goes up. Uh, Nigel starts explaining. On the board, I'm stood at the back, Ray and Russell stood at the back, and Alan stood at the back. I'm stood there listening to everything. Now, if, I, if my coach doesn't explain it correctly, I'd be the first to step in and go, just a minute, lads, there. It, it, this is it. You, you've got it, haven't you? But I didn't need to, because what Nigel said was, no. was, was, was... You were happy with what was said. Yeah. But let's be honest, you could describe that, that situation one way and I could describe the situation another way but it means the same yeah it's just just two different people using different, different terminology yeah. yeah yeah exactly so I'm listening to this and there's nothing wrong with what Nigel said nothing at all wrong that were it that were it his last parting word were do you all understand what we're doing now at this point I'm looking around the room I see one player in the corner. I'm not going to mention no names. They tip them under a buzz here. But I clock it. I clock what they're doing. One player is laid in a corner like this and he's yawning. Oh. Right? Other players are messing about down at the blinking feet and other players are focused in. Right? But I'm not saying anything. I'm watching. And there's an old saying about giving somebody enough rope, the line to sell. So I'm clocking all this. So next thing that happens, we go up, they, they, they go out, they go out. Nigel said, oh, before they go out, he said, you all understand? Yes. Right? Nobody said they didn't understand. Quite simple situation. Yeah. We started the game, I kid you not, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I kid you not. Right? The man in the hole has picked a midfield player up. He shouldn't have a player. There was nothing mentioned in that what I've just spoke to you about no. him picking a player up other than in that transition. Yeah, when you're out of possession and the midfielder engages. So he's got a midfield player. Shouldn't have a midfield player. He should be spare. What he should be doing, because he's in that hole, he, in theory, should be dragging one of the centre-halves into marking, which yeah. then creates another space. So, so, so this hadn't happened, so he's got a man. So at this point, he's got a man, which then means has a knock-on effect because one of our midfield players doesn't have a man. So the other midfield player, instead of somebody saying, you shouldn't have a man, I'll go there, you free yourself, not happened. Uh -uh. So at this right? point, you've realised that the penny's not dropped. 100%. <laughs> I see a midfield player screening, covering the back four. And at no point did Nigel say in that changing room one of the midfield should screen the back four. It never got mentioned in the back four. No. But he's screening the back four. So, the, so oh, you weren't there. Well, Joey Fallon were, and he were going mad. 
So every time they knock the ball forward, right, the cover, the cover to the two centre centrals weren't coming from the two full-backs. It was technically coming from a midfield player sat in front that we never said. So we were looking vulnerable on frigging one ball in behind and frigging getting exposed like mad. So I'm going to Nigel. I'm telling you now, Nigel, they have not grasped it, what you've said. Look at fucking State here. Why is he picking this man up? Next thing what we see, Nigel realises that there's a midfield player spare and he shouts down the pitch, this isn't me, this is Nigel the coach, to this player, I'm not going to mention his name, but you, you, you fucking man's up here. The player's up here. So the player shouts back to him, which is fair enough, he shouts back to him, I can't be covering here, I'm going to mark my player up in there. So then straight away I've gone to Nigel, I'm telling you, they have not got this. Well, where's that all coming from? So Nigel's going frantic, because, but the game's going on then, thinking yeah. fast. So, so we have to get him in at half time. So anyway, we got him in at half time, tried to sort it out, right? So we sorted it out. So second, half, but the moral of the story, it doesn't matter what's happened from there. But the moral of the story is, which again infuriates me, and it's really upset Nigel, is... He's asked the question, do you follow that? Now, I've just told you in layman's terms exactly what should happen. Yeah. In layman's terms, all that happens in this transition, the man who's playing in the hole stays spare in that hole, in that pocket. What should be happening then? The three midfield players behind him should all be picking up when they've got the ball. Should all be picking up, right? That's no problem whatsoever. So at this point, the person that should be worried about the man in the hole should be a defender. Yeah. Because in reality, he's a striker, so it should be a defender. Never happened. Never happened. And it threw us all over. And I mean, seriously, had they grasped that in, the first, in the, what were being said, we would have absolutely hammered. And I'm not being taken nothing away from Runcorn. We would have hammered them, right? We only lost that game because a player plays an inside ball, which were ridiculous, because that's another thing. You don't play an inside ball, and you certainly don't play an inside ball blind. He's played an inside ball blind. It said on comms that our keeper, and that, that's why I had to come to protect the keeper. No, it's, it's, it's on the, uh, the Runcorn Town social media page. Yeah, nothing to do with the keeper. What's happened is the keeper's took the goal kit, he's played it out to his fullback, and then what's happened is the fullback, thinking in his head, that the, the, the centre half will have dropped off and made an angle, so he's played an inside ball and there's nobody there. And it's got cut out and they finished it. They've, they've lobbed the keeper. Yeah. That's how their goal come. So it was a complete mess, but it was a mess because nodding dogs, yes, we understand. So in my opinion, what's happened is they didn't understand. They've gone out to do the warm-up and one or two of the players have got their heads together, thought they thought, they understood it, and how they thought and interpreted it, they've gone and executed it, which were a million miles off what Nigel Woodland can say. But there's no such thing as a stupid question. The stupid question comes when you don't carry out what you've been told. That's right. And I've just told you what we're, there's nothing complicated, that rate, well, which is what me, I've just you, told you. You told me in 10 seconds. Correct. And that's what I mean. So then, so obviously we lose that game at rest. But what's annoyed me more than anything, which really infuriated me, that's the last game that we could really try it. Yeah. And, 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 and it's gone all out. It's gone, basically, I'm going to swear on here, it's gone bloody tits up. Yeah. In the first few minutes. Because they, 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 this is what I'm saying. These players, they think they know the game. But if they don't yeah. understand... For goodness sake, please, do you have to speak to the coach? To be honest, Nigel, can you just explain it again? I'm not just sure what we're supposed to do there. And, and, but it, it's as basic as anything. Not a problem. All that, all that matters is he's in there. So if, that, so if we're now in possession, if we're in possession, what would happen is we're in possession, right? We get the ball. The ball's laid off to a midfield runner. The midfield runner knocks it in behind. We've got pacey players. They're sprinting in onto the centre half. The centre half slides in, gets up quickly, wins the ball quickly before the pacey players can get there, spins it out to the fullback, right? 
there's nobody to defend the fullback. He's now traipsing up the pitch with the ball. So the nearest midfield man comes off his man, right? That man in that hole drops onto his man. Simple as. And try and win the ball back. But that never happened. So this is coming from a, from a person that doesn't understand modern day football. <laughs> <laughs> you get me? Yeah. It's freaking, honestly, it's sad. And they've blown it now because, because when it comes to the big day, there's decisions got to be made and there's no more thing for Stonewall certainty. Am I going to bring and risk that when they don't know what they're doing? But that's the game. They should have been in, in implementing it. Yeah. So what is it now kind of, well, you've just said you're kind of reverting back to the, the tried and tested way, the one that everyone understands, I suppose. Well, I, I, I'm not saying what we're going to go back yeah. to because obviously there'll be people on here listening. I'm not saying what we're going to do, what we go back to. There's three weeks to go yet. Yeah? But my point being, in a game situation... The options. Yeah, in a game situation, that was the best time to do it because we had the players that it involved available. Monday and, Tuesday, Monday and Wednesday, we didn't have the players available. No. You, 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 sorry, Monday, we didn't have those. Uh, we didn't have those players available, so that was the last time we could try and, except if we try and do it behind a closed door game or anything, which there's still time to do that. But the the issue for me is we've got a major problem now. As much as people like certain players or certain individuals, and they'll be disappointed if they're not in or, or selected. <laughs> It's not, my, it's not my fault and it's not the coach's fault if people have gone away missing games at a critical time when we're preparing for such a big game. Yeah. And especially when they're not up there ready. They're not ready. You've seen as what I've seen. We have conversations off air and you're telling me, you're actually saying to me, I'm not saying it to you, you're saying it to me. Blinking X, so so is just... He's way off the pace, isn't he? He's not right, is he? He's not right. You say it to me. <laughs> and, if I just, and you and if come, you come back to me and well, ninety nine point nine percent of the time you would you agree. Correct. So but we're both doing the same thing. Correct. I mean, I had a conversation with Andrew Knights earlier today about something else, about obviously you know, the packages, but then we got talking about varying scenarios and midfield and certain names got brought up and he's even said He's even said, off what he's watching, blinking out, so and so. I'm not going to mention the names on here. He's way off. He's way off this season. He's, he's, he's not had the best season. Oh, that's right. But there's a lot of people who'll come on this ground and support that kid and be behind him. But me as a manager, I, I've got a thankless task because when it comes, all I'm, my, my mind's on is. Well, that support comes from a wrong place. It doesn't come from a place of, you know, getting him on his merits. It comes from a. a, a like a favourable angle rather than 100%. performance. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But that's the way it has to be. I mean, I, I don't have favourites. That's a job it's, as a manager, Brent. That's a job as a manager and you can't win, you know. But I think I've been as fair as I can be, you know. And then I pick a team on Monday. Let's go to the Monday game, right? So I pick a side on Monday of the players they had available. Again, I try to get a balance everywhere i bring i bring kyle back so then if you if you think about it and I'm, if you think about uh where is it this uh, so on monday when i when i played against ellerton alar so i've then gone basically with uh with the, with the lads at the top end of the pitch right in the main at the top end of the pitch who's been trusted all season Right, because we managed to be able to get, we brought Cal back because obviously then bookings have gone down to accumulation to 15. Right now, and obviously we changed the midfield, the midfield were changed. Now, you saw what I saw against a very good Atherton side, right? I just thought we were, and even the manager complimented us after, he's even complimented, he sent me a text message and everything and complimented. I thought we were quality on, on, on Monday night. We I thought we were back to the Baker Borough that, that we all speed. love. Yeah. The, the speed, the transition, the fluency, it was all there, wasn't it? I mean, the blinking link-up play were fantastic. The blinking third man running were blinking fantastic. You know, the only thing that we're missing at times for it to be an absolutely 
golden game is the, is the finished article because we've had chances on third man runs and everything where the link up play is so unselfish and, and, and breaking at sp- pace and power, you know, the end product hasn't gone in the net. I mean, there were one, there were one that involved, I think it were, it were Kyle, uh, Malachi. Malachi were making the run um, uh, 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 and Lewis. They're all linking and then the ball just, if it had, honestly, I can see it now. They did a, they have heard the blinking cheer going up in Burnley because <laughs> it, it, it was impressive. Because it was impressive. It was fantastic. It was good. It was good. It was good on the eye, and everything about it was good. Now we go into you know you, you look at that and then and then you pick players and you look at them and you so it doesn't mean to say for one minute. Let me get this straight. It doesn't mean to say some people are going. Nah, that'll be more or less the team that he'll go in with. Final. No, it doesn't mean that. You know what I've got here? I've got every team sheet from the start of the season printed off. Yeah. Every game. I know which midfield's been the best in terms of producing. And I know which midfield's been pretty damn not right good. Mm. Equally, I know what defenders have been in and what defenders haven't been in, right? But in the main, you know, um, I've got to give some credit here, right, to, to, to probably Scott Johnson a little bit here, because Scott Johnson, we've not had our experienced two at the back that normally play at the back. Together, we've not had it. It's not been here, you know, for what reasons I've told you. Right, so they've not been here. So we've had uh, in in quite a few of the games different players playing at the back, but Scott's played and partnered them, and he's he's been out. He hasn't been in the team all season, and to be honest, he's done he, 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 he's done he's done well. He's done all right in there. He's done he's, he's yeah he's made some wrong decisions at times. I mean, we go back to the South Liverpool game where he made a couple of wrong decisions that led to goals. But I don't want to be negative on him no. here. I want to be really positive on him because he's done he's done he's had to step in there and he's done. Even though we've been you know we haven't the results haven't gone our way. Like well, but I've told you why the results won't go our way because the. The team, we've just moved players about. It's about individuals getting game time. But to be fair to Scott, he's been he, steady. He's waiting for a chance. He's come in and he's stepped in and he's played in a lot of games. Now, I think he'll understand. I mean, there's a lot of time to go between now and the cup final. But he's not so stupid to understand that that, that we're probably going to go with our experience plinking in, in this game <laughs> without giving anything away too much. But but yeah. But the last thing that I'm going to do if that happens, if that happens, he's going to be ousted out of the squad. It's not happening. No. It's not happening. He'll be on the bench, but somebody will be out of that squad. He won't be happy, but it's not yeah. my fault. But he's not, going to, be, going, to be he's not going to be... Sac- he's not going to be sacrificed for the sake of someone else. But he's not. It's a yet. It's not happening. And this is what I mean. I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here to make friends. But I see a player that's giving his all, doing his best, I'm, I'm, I'm participating. I've got the right, right attitude. I've got the right attitude. So there's no way that I'm going to shaft it for the kid. It's not happening. No. So this is what I'm saying. You know, the, it's the bench, me, really, that will, will be a problem because there's going to be some disappointing people that can't even make the bench. Because, because everybody will be, hopefully, you're hoping everybody will be fit. But, but there's fitting injury free. But are they fit to get round that pitch for 90 minutes in an high intense game? Well, and these, are think, all, these are all the decisions that you've got to make. Correct. And that's why I'm fit. Two weeks. And the other one that I've got to make, give a bit of credit to while I'm on the air as well. I mean, I brought that up because, uh, because obviously, for obvious reasons, I brought that up. But I'm going to bring another one up here. And I think he's been a revelation. This is how fickle the fans, the fans can be sometimes. I remember, and this is why I say sometimes some fans don't understand the game. Because last year, the kid I'm going to talk about now made his debut. I always remember he made his debut here. And the fans behind the goals weren't buying into him. No. They weren't buying into him. Who's that? Naval Rabram. And I've gone. And I remember coming on the comms and I said, hang on, in defence of this kid, 
You've got to remember, in defence of him, he was getting two v one. He was getting doubled up down that side. He was getting all doubled up. So you can't just lay the blame at, at, at the player in question, right? And the player I'm talking about is Ben Langley. Now, yeah. let me tell you, Ben Langley has been absolutely been colossal for this team all season. All season. Colossal. Consistent. 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 And he's played two back-to-back -back games. Monday and Wednesday, and even though he were feeling it, he never let his blinking... His, 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 uh, his standards down. He's very composed, isn't he? Very composed. 100%. 100%. So, so my, my, my point being, you know, they, they, they can, some people have got to just calm down and just understand, you know, don't be too quick at ridiculing people because that could have destroyed him in his first game of year. Right? Yeah. But, it, but, but, but we stood by him. And you, now you've seen a blinking absolutely, truly, you know, well, he, got, he got his opportunity. Defender. He got his chance, didn't he? When uh, Aidan Usi was the the right back, wasn't he at the time? I think there must have been an injury or something happened or a suspension. And yeah, Ben just came while, in. I'm, while I'm on about that, Aidan were obviously trying to get hold of me earlier just because they were coming on the on, on to, onto the show, okay. right? Probably giving me an update on his uh, on his, on his on his on his injury because he's due to go for an operation. So he's probably we're going to ring, but we'll bring you back. We'll, we'll bring that in next week about Aiden, because uh, you know we haven't forgot Aiden. He's not the forgotten kid. I mean, I mean, he's, he's he, you know I feel so sorry for Aiden, you know. Um, but yeah, going back, so yeah, Aiden work wasn't in, and then and then, but but you know, from start of season at one point because we had an issue at left back, we put Ben at he got sacrificed, so we put we kind of had. Um, Aidan Usse were playing at right back Ben were playing at, um, at, left. at left back um, but then when we got when we got uh, Mason Fallon back Mason's oh, yeah. obviously we switched it, he switched it, I mean I've got all the teams here in the team sheets and it's no surprise you look at it, so it tells a story really you know it does tell a story um, but if you look I mean, I mean Mason from Mason Fallon being out, we've missed him as well you know massively missed him yeah. He's a, you know, he, he, I mean, when you look on, and this isn't being disrespectful to Mason because he's a good, he's a very good, very good astute defender. But when you look at him, and he, and he's not slow, he's quick, but he is carrying a little bit. Do you know what I'm saying? His his stature, yeah. he's not yeah. like an athlete, is he? And that's not being disrespectful to the kid. I'm just stating no. he's the solid. obvious. But he's solid, and he reads the game, and he's got fantastic delivery. You know, his his, his quality. Yeah, you know. So if, you know, if we're talking about the players, Brent, like you, you know, Mason was there, but then we had the young lad who you brought through from under twenty threes, young Cameron. Cameron. Correct. Now Cameron's raw, but he stepped in some big games this season. I mean, none more than than at, than at Southport. Then yeah. we've got it. We've got it. But but going forward, going forward, Cameron, no Cameron's done. Going forward. No problem. No problem. You know, and I remember I, I told Cameron a tale. He was disappointed. And, <coughs> excuse me. And I actually told him a tale, and it's a true story. This, right? About about when Reese James was at Manchester United, and he he. I'm not going to go into all the full details about uh, uh, Louis Van Gaal wanted to start him in the very first match. I think it was Swansea at home at Old Trafford, and he primed him, and he was going to be playing in this game, right? Um. Very first, because he he kind of liked Reese James, he you know because soon as he soon as he come, if you remember, Louis Van Gaal came late, um, because he were he were with Ollen, were he in the World Cup, and yeah. he sent all his trusted lieutenants over before he got there. But I think but Reece, had already, been, Reece had already played out in America during the yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, uh, um, anyway, when they had to introduce themselves to him in the in the dining room or whatever when he came over and he had to shake hands and say who you were and he said I'm oh, Reese James shake me out and he went oh he stopped in his tracks he said oh so you're Reese James nice to meet you because he do, there were good things being said about Reese right yeah but what happened were and I'm not going into ins and outs but what happened were just before the Swansea game Reese picked an injury up now, there's two ways, and I'm not going to say anything on here, how this should have been handled, right? And I'm not going to talk, because this isn't what I'm, I'm talking about. But the fact were, unfortunately, the way that, it, in honesty, he handled it, because he was being honest, 
he's actually pulling out to the, the Swansea game. Now, listen, I'm an experienced manager. You're an experienced media guy. It doesn't take anybody. If you've just come into a club and you turn around and see a young player that you're going to give your debut to, that's going to go out in front of 70,000 fans and you've done training sessions, coaching sessions with him involved and you, you've got your head on and you, you know what's going to happen. The, when he comes and knocks on your door or tells the physio that he's, he's not fit, right, what's the first thing that will go through your head? Well, I can tell you what will go through my head as a manager. What's going, what's going through man? He's bottled it. He's, yeah, exactly. He's milky, right? He's milky, right? Yeah. So, so Van Gaal were gutted and, and he were a bit peed off with it. So, so but Reese were being honest. But what's then happened then is he kind of lost his squad number and Louis Van Gaal had this, had this strict, but where first team squad only could be in that, in that canteen together. If you weren't in the squad, you, 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 you had to go out. So he, he kind of made Reese take his, stuff out and he couldn't be in because he weren't being in the squad then right yeah. so he had to he had to come out out of the first team squad environment anyway so so for for a few games reese wasn't being involved when he was fit and everything reese wasn't involved so he were he were, he were down at lee village playing in the 23s and everything and, and wasn't involved and he was getting a bit frustrated but there were clubs coming in that wanted to take him on loan and he kind of didn't know whether to twist a stick and he's talking to his dad, but you know what it's like talking sometimes to your dad. Your dad, your dad's your dad at the end of the day. Even though Linton is 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 well experienced yeah, and he's a good he wants, guy, he just wants your best for your son, don't you? Yeah. So he, he must have told him like whatever. Anyway, re spoke to me, and I said, "Listen, listen. What you've got to do? Do not go. Whatever you do, you need to go. There's only one person knows in his head where you are in this club." And that isn't that isn't your dad. That isn't any of the coaches. It's the manager. He's the man. So you need to be knocking on his door, right, and asking him. But for goodness' sake, don't go and ask him and say, "Why am I in this? Not in this team? Why am I not in?" This? Because the results were shy at the beginning. Man United, right? They were shy. Like a red rag to I said, a ball. Yeah, exactly. Right? I said that'll be right. A young kid coming in and saying, "Why am I not in this team?" I said, "You can't say that." I said, you've got to go in with a bit of tact. You've yeah. got to go in and say that, you know... What do I need to do to get into What do I need to do to get into this team? That's what you've got to do. And if you remember, Louis van Gaal kept talking about philosophy. Yeah. My philosophy is this. I said, so use that word, philosophy. So I said, and if you remember, I think they were playing... They hadn't won a game. They were under a lot of pressure with van Gaal. And I think the, one of the, the first game they won, I might be wrong on the team, but I'm nearly certain it were Arsenal at Old Trafford. They beat Arsenal at Old Trafford. So I get told to Reese, I speak to him, and I say, Reese, if I were you, Monday morning, it might have been Sunday, this, it might have been a Sunday game, I think it were. I said, if I were you, this is where you strike now. You go and knock on his door. Yeah. Get in an hour earlier for training and go and find him and go and knock on his door. Whatever you do, you don't link him, turn around and say, why am I not in this team? I said, he'll be in a good mood because he just beat Arsenal. <laughs> right, so he's going to be in a good mood. Yeah, I've been thinking that myself, Brent. Yeah, I said, go in and speak to him. So anyway, he knocks on the door. So he, as he goes, so he went in early. Listen to what 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 I've, what I've said to him, and he went in. Right, and the, apparently his door opened, and there were a guy, somebody in with him, and he spotted him, and he said, "Oh, the guy's going. Oh, good morning, Reese. How are you?" Uh, he said, "Yeah, can I come and speak to you, Gaffer? I just want a word with you." Yeah, come in, come in. So he then says to Reese James, he said, so Reese says, listen, I, I, there's obviously clubs after me out there uh, wanting me to go on loan, but I just don't know where I really want to stay here. I want to, I want to, I want to be a part of the, of your team, and I, I want to, I want to produce the philosophy because you you always say that what you know this is my philosophy. I want to be part of it. What do I need to do? So he's ticking the boxes at this point yeah. because he's using them yeah. words. So what do I need to do? Right? What do I need to do to, 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 to secure a place in this team? And you know what he said to him? He said, I'm going to tell you now, Reese. right? And I'm going to be honest with you. He said, as it stands at this moment in time, at this moment in time, as a defender, a defender, he said, you're probably fourth down the pecking order as a defender. He said, but let me tell you, 
going forward and your quality on the ball. He said, you're a premiership player all day long. He said, but I've got to get you right defending. He said, so it's up to you, but I'd sooner you stay here and work with me and I'll get you that you're, you're up there. Right. Yeah. The moral of this story, it didn't matter where Reese went after that or what he did. I'm not talking about Reese James. The moral of the story, that was his answer. When I look at Cameron in a lesser way, I agree. That's what I see. I see he's, exactly he's the same. player all day long. He's way out off at the minute. He needs coaching. He needs developing as a defender. That's my coach's job, right? Going forward with a ball at his feet. Yeah. He's, he's up there. He's up there. So, you know, even though, again, Cameron, we brought him in and introduced him, he's got to be patient. Next season is, 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 is the season, really, in a way, because he needs to be working hard, get a good pre-season under his belt, get the coaches working with him on what he needs, and let's see where that takes him. And that goes for a majority of the young players. Yeah. Interesting. Good, good point, that, Brent. I want to pick up on something else. We always talk about something away from the club. And it's been, uh, well, it's been plastered all over social media over the last 24 hours. And it's a topic we often talk about. The FA Cup. What an absolute shambles. The FA have announced they're taking away the replays, which, of course, is going to hit the non-league clubs, the lower league clubs, in the pocket because... They love them days away at the big grounds. FA Cup. L- l- listen, when you look back about in the history of the FA Cup and they talk about, you know, how exciting it is and, and everything else, it's not it's not exciting when it's Manchester United, Man City, a Liverpool, uh, a Liverpool United, a Liverpool City. It's exciting because you get a blinking, you know, Accrington Stanley. Yeah. Play, playing against blinking a, a, a QPR. Or where the street Ere- Ereford Ere- United versus Newcastle United. Yeah, exactly. And then and that and then and obviously they're playing a game and they, and 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 you know that's what brings the excitement out. Or a non league you know, when these non league clubs progress and they're in the FA Cup, right? It, it, that's the excitement. Then they say it's the magic of the FA Cup. That is the magic. It's yeah. the minnows, the lesser teams that bring David, the magic. David and Goliath kind of battle. 100%, 100%. You know, even to a point in the last round of the FA Cup in the quarterfinal, I think who did Crystal, uh, not Crystal, uh, who did uh, Coventry? You know, it was such a good game. I don't know if it were Forest, I don't know. But Coventry were playing a team, even though it were only one league above, mm. they were playing. But what a great game it were. It were it, and you were willing because... The underdog were Coventry, so you were willing Coventry to go on and win, and and actually they did in the end. They did. So what I'm saying, we had Maidstone United against Ipswich Town, didn't we? Yeah. So all them, they, they, that's the magic of the FA Cup, and that's and and then when you think about the replays, if a club, I mean it's gold, it's gold dust. If you if you if you're a Maidstone and you get Newcastle, right at Maidstone. And you manage to draw with them on your ground. Well, what a payday is that for Maidstone to go back up to Newcastle? Well, that can kind of set that sets a club up for at least the next five years. They can Correct. plan for the future with with that payday. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, so they're stopping all that because because obviously it's all dictated by the top end where the money and it's wrong and it's the same. I, I've been banging the drum. I've wrote to the, the FA Council in the past about about why have they stopped um, teams like at Step 6. We break up Borough up to the last 10 years, I'd say. Not been Right? In. We're always in the FA Cup. We've got... We, well, we haven't now because obviously the new clubhouse being built on the side, but we have a, we have a plaque. We, we played in the... The fiftieth anniversary of the FA Cup, Bay Cup, is on it. List of teams. We were always in the FA Cup. Soon as they brought in the the, the scenario, the uh, of of um, teams can come in and ground share, so they haven't got their own facility. Like let's say City of Liverpool. I'm just using this because it's one that comes to my head straight away. They've no facility. They're not playing anywhere. They're playing in. The, so they apply for the FA Cup. 
right? So they're an additional team that goes in. So every for every one City of Liverpool who's in the same boat as City of Liverpool, okay. that's got no facility of their own, right? Entering the FA Cup, right? And knocking somebody like Bacup Borough out, who's got their own facility and meet all the grand grading criteria, but we can't get in because the rule is, or what they say is, we're oversubscribed. Yeah. Well, is that fair in my eyes, that they're oversubscribed? If, if that's the case, surely the clubs that take priority should be the ones that own their own, that have their own facility. Not a club that hasn't got their own facility. That should be a, that should be a criteria. If you're in FA Cup, you, you have to have your own facility. If you don't have your own facility, you can't get it FA Cup. Not knock a team out like Bay Cup that can't compete in the FA Cup because they've got their own facility, but it's oversubscribed because linking City of Liverpool has won, no, no disrespect to City of Liverpool, uh, uh, you know, take a place, but there's no facility. And, and that's what I think is wrong. I don't think it's right. Year on year. It happens year on year, and it's clubs like Bake Up Borough and, and, and other clubs that, 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 that depend on the, you know, the prize money of the FA Cup. Because if you think about it, listen, I've said it all along, and, it's, and, and I, you know, we can talk about it. This is a good way of leading in about, about budgets. I mean, listen, we're not competing at amateur level. We're competing in a in a in a an environment where a lot of clubs collective wage bill is a lot of money. Yeah. So the best players out there, even the best players from our level, ignore the likes of Bay Cup, even though they play, they've played at Bay Cup, right? Do if they're getting tapped up and offered double their money. And in some instances, treble money, they're going. Yeah. They're going. It's as simple as they're and going. That doesn't, that doesn't matter whether you're, be, whether you're a better club or a lesser club. More often yeah. than not, they'll go lesser <laughs> club because they're getting the money doubled. Right. So now we'll talk about, now we'll talk about, I know it's just digressing off the FA Cup a little bit here, but it all comes, it's relevant what I'm saying, because in the FA Cup, you have to rely on prize money. In the FA Vars, you rely on prize money. And yeah. it's important because not every other competition, you don't get prize money. There's no prize money, right? Then I mean, the only two competitions, you can attract prize money. So my point is this, and I've said it all along at Bay Cup. As long as Bay Cup can hold their own, as much as we want in this club at the minute where we're going, as long as we want, we, 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 we're safe and we can compete, as much as we're ambitious, right? One thing's a stonewall certainty. I am not going to put the, the, this football club as a football club into jeopardy by my own admission of wanting a top team out there that's going to challenge for the league. For us to get a top team or any other team to get a top team on that pitch comes with money. And I know a lot of money. Double my wage bill that I'm paying out now collectively. Yeah. Right? Double it. Right? And then, but if that's the case, and this is no disrespect to some of the players we've got here now, you wouldn't be going for the players we've got here now. You'd be going for top players and bringing them in, as we have done in the past. I'll make no bones about it. It's my money. You know, it's been my money. I have, the club hasn't found the money. I found the money. When we've had the likes of Ian Hughes, who, 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 who's, who's a Welsh international playing at this football ground, he was on back in that day. He was on very good money. Yeah. Right, very good money, right? So, but there comes a time where you can't afford, you can't, you're killing the club. Now, I've yeah. seen, I've said it before, I have seen clubs that have done that, they're chasing the dream. And Rosendale United are one of them. When they had an owner that was at back of Rosendale United, right, who was, who was like throwing money at it by paying players top dollar. And very good players, you know, they had, you talk about the FA Cup, they had an excellent run in the FA Cup where it, where it got on prize money as well. But that club is no longer here. It's got houses on the site, right? Their history's gone. They're forgotten about, right? Now, there's other clubs like that that's gone. You've seen how the mighty have been up there and fallen. Droylsden, back in our league, been out of the league for a couple of seasons, right? At one time, paying top dollar. 
lost yeah. a load of money. Even in the football league, let's get it right. In the past, Salford City, right, I'll use them, have got where they've got because they've had money backing them and they've gone out and got the best players they could afford, right, to go in there and make sure they progressed. Not long ago, they put a statement out that, that they needed a new direction. It's pretty obvious the new direction is the, the money's been flow, taken. Cash flow. They can, yeah. They've got cash flow. The money's been taken away from them. So now they've got to try and put, work within the, 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 the means. And because they're working within the means, let's be honest, they're in a bit of free fall because yeah. they, they could get relegated very easily, right? They're in free fall. But probably five years ago, as much as they're in free fall, the, 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 the owners or the backers of, of Salford would have made sure they're not in free fall yeah. because they throw money at it. Yeah, they can slow the process down, put the brakes on by bringing in some new, new blood. Correct. So, so what I'm trying to get at here, we are competing... And, and even the league above, you're competing in a top league. You top, you know, like like the managers who'll be under pressure. You look at Bury, you look at what they'll be throwing out and what wage bill they'll have. That manager, if he doesn't get promotion, he's oh. going to be under pressure because because he's probably working with. Not only is he, is he working with with a collective top wage bill, but he will be on, on wages as well. Yeah, you know, so they they collective wage bill. So when when we all stand here and or sit here, or you know, when we're talking and saying we need to be challenging to get up that league, yeah, we do. I get that. I get that one hundred percent. But it's a slow burner at a club like Bakel unless unless we've got in, in, in enough money that's not going to put the football club in jeopardy in terms of so we can attract the, the those players in. But you but you're doing that. You know, you talk about the new club, that investment that the club, you know, the football club is taking on is all about getting revenue, bringing revenue into the club, which is then we can transfer that onto the pitch. Well, yeah, you, you, you've got this. Is, I mean, I mean, you've, you've got this that's going on here, but there's also, which hasn't come out yet, and, and, hasn't, and we, haven't, we haven't, you know, put it into the football because we're waiting for the, the architect to, to, to finish it off. Hopefully, by the start of next season, hopefully, then there'll be a new entrance. Everything will be new at Bake Up in terms of, you know, instead of coming in where you normally come in now down that between the, the, the houses and the, and the football ground, which you have for bloody God knows how long, right? There's going to be a new entrance. We're going to build a disabled entrance car park and, and, and kind of put the turnstiles where the, where, the, where the double gates are, where the coach goes in. Yeah. Uh, and, and then we'll come in from another angle. So there is progression. But what I'm saying is, on the football pitch where it matters, right, unless you've got, we don't forget, and I keep coming back to this, and I don't want to keep harping on about it, right, a player that I've had at this football club for five, six years, right, that I treated like a blinking son, right, played here, uh, he's, he, he's been a contract player here, he played here, we built a side round him, everything else, and, and after three games into the season, I think it were, he bangs an hat-trick in on here, and then we didn't see him again because uh, the, 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 the vultures came in, offered him, thinking, stupid money, right? Now, I could have easily, he, he's basically saying to me, I won't go if you can match it, just match it. Well, if I match it, I'm putting everything on, in jeopardy. Yeah. Plus so I, I have to look, look to let him go. Yeah. So, so, so where we are, is, is where we are, and that's not taking anything away from the current bunch and the current, you know, the, the, they're doing well, they're doing... I mean, I mean, as much as we might say it were a, fr a frustrating season on, from everybody's part, when you break everything down, it has been a frustrating season, but it's been a frustrating season mainly up to Christmas, and I think at Christmas, before we went into the turn of the year, we were, we were sitting fourth in the league, yeah. sitting fourth, but then we, we ended up in a situation when the turn of the year... Right, where we, we weren't getting fixtures, we weren't playing, it weren't because of games getting called off. You look at the fixtures and look at the dates and look at the gaps between them. Well, look, you know, that, was, that was the problem. There was, there was no momentum. We, couldn't, we weren't carrying any momentum forward into games because we're having weeks off. And well, we went about seven weeks without a single home game 100%. And then we're going to the Southport game, which was a quarter final. I mean, don't forget. 
you know, as much as you, you, you we're all you, we're disappointed because we're not in a playoff position, or we're disappointed because we haven't, we, we, we we're not getting promotion or, or anything like that. Let's not take anything away here from the season. We, we've end, we've we've got to the quarter final of the blinking Lancashire Challenge Trophy, which is a blinking fantastic competition. It's Lancashire's major major competition. Yeah. Well, that's why the finals in the Reebok. Well, not the Reebok now, whatever University Stadium, right? We and, and we haven't got there by luck. We've got there by beating Adderton Collieries, who were three leagues above two, three leagues above us, in their own backyard with a reserve goalkeeper, with a reserve goalkeeper in, <laughs> correct? Right? And and we've gone to Southport in their backyard, and absolutely everybody's creaming themselves about the first half performance. Absolutely fantastic, but that's the first yeah. game we played yeah, yeah. In, in in three weeks, right? And on top of that, we've got to the final of the Edward Case Trophy, the trophy we won last year. So yeah. as much as you, we might all think it's not been the best season, when you break it down, there's, there's, there's an improvement oh, on last season. The only thing, because I've got the facts here, in 2022-23, right, we played 34 games, right? This year, we played 34 games. Last year, we had 12 wins. This year, we've had 13 wins. So we've had a win. So it's an improvement, whatever which way you look at it, right? Last year, we had five draws. This year, we've had six draws. Last year, we had 17 losses. This year, we've had 15 losses. I think our, we, were, we were speaking earlier, Brent, and I'm, the Achilles heel has been the defeats with the bottom clubs. I've got it here, right? So we've lost games. This is below for teams that's finished below us. We've lost against Blackpool. Yeah. We've lost twice against Shelley. We've lost twice against Runcorn. And we've lost against Steeton. Now, if you look at those games and we win those games, which this team and squad is capable of doing, we're, we're in the play we're in the playoffs. Yeah, third. We're in the playoffs. That, ignore everything else in that batch alone. Now oh, that tells me. Time. So that tells me, right? Is attitude and mindset. Preparation, another word that you would like to say. That's it, the, the facts don't lie. They're there. Then again, so when you look back, I mean, look at the other night, Shelley. One thing I'm going to mention about Shelley, right? The other night, I've got to give them. I mean. So much credit because the pace they they, 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 they it came was, out of the blocks, didn't they? Listen, what you've got to remember: if you can't put food on your table and you're starving and you, you you're going to be homeless, you'll do anything. You, you start fighting, don't you? You have to do because yeah. it's survival. Yeah. You have to do. That team come here; they had to throw everything at it. It was survival, and they did survival, and they did. And I've got to give them so much blinking credit, right? I was hoping that they won't get near us and lay a glove on us because we football them to death and get away from them. I but even threw, I right? even had to risk. Did I really want to throw Gervin, Kyle, Lewis, Malachi onto I'm that pitch? Because you were, you were hoping you did you weren't going to need them. Correct, but because that game were going the way it were going. There come a time where I needed to introduce them and get them on. But this is the disappointment for me. And I remember Nigel's parting words before they went out that day. The lads who were in the team on, 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 on Monday or whatever, right? So the lads who were in the team, right, yesterday did this fantastic. They were fucking absolutely superb on all fronts, right? It's your lad, your turn now to go out there and do exactly the same. And do you know the disappointment? The disappointment. We never looked like scoring. No. We didn't create nothing. But this is my argument now. What I can say to you, you ones, comes, this is my argument. And I used to say it when Man United was struggling, when, 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 when Oli Gola Sunshine were the, were, were, were the manager and, uh, and the likes, or that Ralph, uh, Ralph Randy, Ray, yeah. right? When he was the manager. Because they played, they played a midfield that were probably collectively uh, aggressive midfield, but there's nobody to unlock a door, no. so they weren't creating nothing. And I used to go mad when about one matter because 
whether you like one matter, you don't like one matter. One thing about one matter, he was a quality player, intelligent, and he pick, he'd unlock a door and he'd get you in. So you could play him, you could be playing kind of under par, but if he got the ball and one one quality pass, he unlocks the door, you're in, right? Now I look at the other night with that team that went out there, and I didn't see that. I didn't see your intelligent player. That, no. that got the ball down, controlled it, and pass and move and 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 and, and you know link up play like I saw on Monday. All we, I saw we, we failed, failed to string at least three or four passes together. Exactly, and what I saw were reminiscent that you go and watch an amateur game somewhere that a team that's like kind of been thrown together and we're they're launching the ball forward and we're launching the ball back. And they're launching the ball forward, we're launching it back. And it's like, monkey net, what we're doing, get hold of the ball. And try and play football. And we didn't create nothing. We created nothing. We could have played till Lincoln today. We wouldn't have scored because we created nothing. But that's from a group of players who you were hoping, as Nigel said, to go out, grab the grab the game by the you know, by the horns and stake a claim for a final place. Correct, honestly. I, 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 listen, they can point fingers at me, they can call me, throw pouters or wear a blinking tin hat, they can dog me all they want. I'm not bothered. The fact of the matter is, they're encouraged to go out there and play football. That's what the coach, that's what they do all the time, even on the on the pitches, what they do. And this doesn't, you know, you know the players who's been around us most of the season, if not all the season, and you know the players who haven't. Yeah. And I'm not saying for whatever reason or, or whatever, but I, what I'm saying is, you know, irrespective of that, the good players, when, they're, when their mindset's on it, they are good players, right? But they didn't show they were good players against Shelley. They showed that were blinking, you know, they, they, they were terrible. They were terrible. They were. they were terrible. Anything more to add, Brent, before we <coughs> wrap up another week? On so what I'm going back to finish off the... To finish off all about the FA Cup, right, well, which you said about the prize money. So what I'm trying to say is because we got on about 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 budgets, and 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 that's the the situation. What what clubs are in? You know, you're competing against some very very big budgets out there collectively. And what I'm saying is, the FA Cup for clubs in the National League system is vital because if you progress round by round, you get money. And that money is vital as prize money. If you progress round by round in the VARs, you get money. If you progress round by round in the, in the Lancashire Challenge Trophy, even though it's a big competition, a big cup, we don't get no prize money unless you're in the final. Right? So if you're playing in your domestic competition, you don't get no prize money. It's no prize money. So my point is, the FA and the stance that they do including taking away the blinking um, replays. That takes away the magic of the FA Cup, in my opinion, and the chance of a minnow going on the replay, going to a big club's ground. It takes that away. But it also, by the fact that they, they're letting, they, they keep saying they're oversubscribed and they're letting these, uh, these, these teams in, uh, you know, these who haven't got their own facilities, and clubs that, at step six get penalised, right across the country, get penalised, and they're not allowed in. What they're doing, they're starving us of a, of a chance to earn some money by prize money. And and again, that is, uh, it's all damaging. So to me, the decisions the FA have made on all on both fronts is totally damaging. I mean, I mean, they're on about boy, boycotting this year's. And as a, from a selfish point of view, I will leave on this. Right from a selfish point of view, they're on about they're on about uh, all, all boycotting it. All these. <laughs> You know, EFL clubs. Well, yeah. Well, well, yeah. So I'm thinking, well, in a selfish way, we'll not boycott it. Us, but we might get in there. <laughs> but I can under I can understand the principle of why clubs <laughs> would want to come together in solidarity and uh, and boycott it. Hmm? I do. I do. And and and, and so the, it, the decision's been made by the FA. And 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 and, 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 and it's we'll wrong. Stop. Yeah, well, the, all the clubs should be should be being have a chance to vote. I mean, th we talk about. I mean, there was something flying about what I heard about la la last night about 
about a democratic situation. You know, let's get one thing straight. If you're, if you know, some football clubs are operated by committees, right? This football club is operated by heads of departments, right? You're, you, we don't have committees. You're head of media. So you make your own decisions. Brent Peters doesn't make decisions for you. You make your own decisions. The only thing that comes to me is if you want to spend money and you'll come and then, and then obviously you'll come and get that signed off. Yeah. That's it. So then you've got head of business development. Again, I don't make de decisions on, on what's going on on head of, head of business development. You know, Andrew Knights is not micromanaged. He does his own thing. But if he needs to spend like he's come to see me today about these kits, which, kit, you know, one's, one's that price, one's that price, which one ever to get gaffer, right? That's because he's spending money. Yeah. So, you get me. Hospitality with Hospitality with Deborah. I don't get involved in the hospitality. I don't get involved in who she puts behind the bar. I don't get involved. The only thing that, that I would get involved in on, on Deborah, she makes them decisions herself. Everybody makes the decisions who are head of a department. The only thing I get involved with, like I had to do the other week, is we had people in drinking, and it's not, it's not the drinking bar, the person behind the bar's job to decide to shut the bar because she's, she's fed up and she's had enough. That can't happen. You know, the bar stays open as long as people are drinking. We'll dictate, or Deborah will dictate when the bar shuts, not, not the person behind the bar. You know, you get yeah. me. So, so what I'm trying to say is, in, in a roundabout way, all I'm trying to say is, is different, whereas at some football clubs or cricket clubs, there's a committee run. So you sat there and you'll get blinking people firing things across. And, and you know, I just don't, you know, committees. You'll have, a, you'll have a, meet, a meeting and nothing will get solved. Have a meeting for a meeting. Anyway, exactly. great show, Boris Yeltsin. <laughs> Top man. See you later. See you later, comrade. Hello. Welcome to Make Up Borough Football Club. I'm Andrew Knight, Head of Business Development. Over the last 18 months, both myself and our fantastic media team have been working hand in glove, building up crucial relationships between the business sector in Baycup, Rosendale and beyond to link them with the club and get some much needed investment into Baycup Borough Football Club. With over 50 businesses now involved in Baycup Borough Football Club, that's fantastic, but we would like you and your business to come and join us on our journey. We have lots of exciting packages available to suit both your company's budget and your needs. So what platforms do we have here at Baycup Borough Football Club for your business? We have the live rewind show every Friday with Steve Brown, our head of media, and our manager up for over 25 years, Brent Peters. We also have every game home and away live through our Facebook platform, brought to you again by Baycup Borough Media team. We have banners, pitch side boards, website hyperlinks and programme adverts. These are all things that will promote your business through the football club. We also, for this season, have a very exciting new, new edition. We're offering match day hospitality. Packages are available. Please get in touch. So if you like the sound of us from what you've seen today in this short video, then please get in touch. You can come and meet us. You can come have a look around our facilities and meet the staff. Or likewise, we can always organise a meeting to come and visit you. On behalf of myself, Andrew Knight, and everyone connected with Break Up Borough Football Club, thank you for listening to this short video. And fingers crossed, We'll see you all soon.